It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood today. And so what I thought I'd do is talk about four things today. And the first thing is, who's spying on us? There's a class action lawsuit. And if you go to the Corvette Forum, you can see some of the information on that. Valentine 1, Generation 2. Show you a little bit about how I've got that set up in my car along with Waze, W-A-Z-E, for double duty and in gathering info of what's going on around the neighborhood and on the highways. Smart Tune connects to your OBD2, OBD2 port. Does it work? I'll show you that. Tell you about that. And on the final thing. Uh, and in no particular order either, but could be the final thing. The Corvette C8, the Corvette Z06, and the Corvette E-Ray 2023, 2024. Uh, which one is the better deal? Or is there a better deal? Or are there no deals? <laughs> which is probably what we're going to get. But uh, so I think the first thing I'll show you today is we'll show you the um, Valentine one and the way I've got it set up in my car. I'm going to start up the car. Valentine one automatically goes on. In fact, my Valentine one, I have a mount up here, as you can see. And also I'm tapping off the power source that's up here for the rear view, mir for the rear view mirror and um, I'm tapping off that power source so that automatically when I start up the car, not only does my rear view mirror go on, but my Valentine one goes on, it's kind of nice. And also my Valentine one is talking to my cell phone and my cell phone is communicating to my Valentine one and it has this free, F-R-E-E, -E, my favorite four letter word, it has this free app that you can use that takes the data off Valentine 1 and presents it to you on your cell phone. Nice. And if you notice, I've got it set up for quarter mile, half mile. If I, if I come down, let me see if I can do it. If I come down, I can get it out even further. Let me see if I can. There we go. There's one mile. See, now, see the red, yellow, and blue, uh, red, yellow, and green. The uh, one mile is green, and the half mile is yellow, and the red is quarter mile. So you can see uh, how far things go out. And I think what happens, too, is somehow or other these Valentine ones talk with each other because I'll see, uh, like, I'll be driving down my road outside my house here, and over on Highway 301, it says, Highway 301 at Mile Marker, such and such, it'll tell you approximately where it is. Uh, there is a, um, a police officer or something like that, to that effect, uh, that's uh, shooting pictures. And uh, you know what that means. <laughs> so anyway, I told you I had a couple of things going on. I have the Valentine one going, talking to my cell phone, but I also have Android Auto. Uh, yours is Apple CarPlay if you have um, an Apple phone. But this is Android Auto, which I'm showing you here, and what happens is I have Waze going too. And uh, let me just get rid of that. I don't need that. And I, I, I like to make this a little bigger, so if I pinch it in, it gives me a little bigger view. And between the cell phone and Waze, because on Waze, this is what's pretty cool on Waze. If you see somebody uh, with a radar situation set up somewhere, you can tap this button over here and it will automatically, uh, you can automatically tell everybody else who has ways running that there is a uh, police officer taking pictures uh, at a certain place and it will show you on the map where he or she is. And it would also show you if there's a major accident uh, or if there's a major pothole or sinkhole or whatever, you know, all those things are very, very helpful uh, to anybody driving along. So I like the combination. Uh, and by the way, this is a, 
I did a uh, video on this phone holder. I think it's really slick. It slips in. There's no glue. There's no screws put in or anything. It clips right in behind this um, monitor right here, and uh, it works slick as can be. It's great for the phone holder, especially if you've got a Valentine 1 going or any other radar detector. You can do the same thing with another radar detector. The only thing I don't know is if you get this free. Um, this guy donated this uh, app, um, and we're still using it today, and it's, it works great. And I really, really like it. And it talks to you, by the way, it's not, you don't have to keep looking down at your phone or at your screen. These two guys will talk to you and let you know what's going on. And uh, it also tells me when I'm coming up to railroad crossings, it'll say railroad crossing one quarter of a mile or something like that. It keeps talking to you so you don't have to keep putting your eyes and, you know, not take, taking your eyes off the road. You don't want to be doing that. So you can hear everything that they're talking to you all the time. It's pretty cool. I really like it a lot. And I like this setup, and it, it's uh, really, really good. It even looks better at night. Um, I, this will give you kind of an idea what it might look like. It's very, very uh, clear and easy to read. And it works like a charm, and it is F-R-E-E. -E. I love it. Smart Tune. It goes in your OBD2 port right down here. And uh, I was all excited about this when I got it. I thought it might work really well. Um, bottom line is, well, well, let me just back up for a second. Uh, I've been chasing zero to 60 times. I'm stuck at 3.0. I can't get below three seconds. And uh, I don't like to, I can change the t tire pressures, blow up the fronts, uh, lose some tire pressure in the rears and do all this kind of stuff to try to uh, sneak myself into three seconds. But I don't want to do that. I want to, this, is, this, I want this car just the way it is, the way I normally drive it every day. Why can't I get three seconds? And I can't. So I thought maybe by trying this little gizmo uh, down at my OBD2 port down there, if, if I put that in, uh, maybe I break three seconds. Guess what? I can't, uh, I don't. I'm, I'm unable to break three seconds. Maybe I'd have put headers and uh, high flow cats and an exhaust system and maybe that's that's probably where the time is. But I know this is a stock car. I want to keep it uh, just the way it is stock. Don't fudge the uh, anything about the car to go make it go any faster. I, tr I played with the DA, the density altitude and I thought I'd get it down where the density altitude would be lower, more like closer to sea level rather than three or 4,000 feet. And uh, obviously that's going to affect the performance of the car, but you know something? It doesn't seem to do much of anything there either. So I would say, what did I spend, $150 on that thing? It's $150 I probably should have given to a charity. OnStar, you have OnStar? We all have OnStar. Uh, even if we don't subscribe to it, the allegedly OnStar is collecting data from you and I and has been collecting data from you and I for I don't know how many years. And I may I quote a quote unquote allegedly. GM has been challenged and they're asking about it. And if you go to the Corvette forum, it's really, really hot over there. And they're talking, and it's free, by the way. You can go on, get on there for free. The question is, is GM collecting this data and selling it to insurance companies or whatever, allegedly? Um, and GM has just announced they're not doing it anymore. So what's that mean? If they say they're not doing it anymore, that must mean they haven't doing it. Well, anyway. I believe there is a class action lawsuit that's been generated at, on the Corvette Forum, and you can go over to Corvette Forum and follow it all you want, and there might be some small remunerations coming back from, for the people whose data has been taken from them allegedly. So keep posted on that. Check out the Corvette Forum, and there's a lot of 
talk going on there about that right now. So we're looking at the computer here this morning, and I just went to Chevrolet.com under vehicles. I took performance vehicles, and of course, there's a heck of a buy right here, and that's a $30,000 Camaro. Um, but we're interested over here in these other three vehicles right here. And the first one is a regular C8 that starts at $68,300. Then you go to the Z06 and it jumps ooh, almost double to $112,700. That's a stripped out nothing extra. And I don't think, I don't know if that includes destination charges or not, but it's going to be a little more than that. I figured five to ten thousand dollars more than that with just a couple of options. And then we go over to the E-Ray and wow, look at the E-Ray here. The E-Ray uh, has a little better deal here. A hundred, four thousand nine hundred. So that's eight, what's well, about eight thousand dollar difference, eight thousand dollars more from a two-wheel drive Z06 to a all-wheel drive E-Ray. What a deal. Now, it gets better than this. Not only that do you get all-wheel drive, which I think is incredible, for 104, that's $8,000 less, but they also throw in on the E-Ray carbon ceramic brakes which is an eight or $9,000 option on the Z06. You can't get those on the Z06 standard equipment, but you get the carbon ceramic brakes on the all new E-Ray, which is about an eight or nine, between eight and $9,000 that they give you. So basically, if you subtract eight to $9,000 from the 104,900, you're down on the $90,000 range, which gets you pretty close to a nicely equipped um, C8, regular C8 Corvette. So what am I saying? <laughs> I'm saying I think the all-wheel drive E-Ray Corvette with the standard equipped carbon ceramic brakes, which is an eight dollars to $9,000 option on the Z06, is a much better deal. Now here's the thing that gets even crazier. I'm seeing zero to 60 times from the Z06 at around uh, 2.5 seconds. And in this one, anywhere from 2.4 to 2.1 seconds on the all-wheel drive E-Ray. So where's my pick? This blue car right here. <laughs> I think that's a hell of a deal, but um, that's just my opinion, and uh, give us yours down below.